Oh yeah, this is the third lesson in the binomial pack, and it's slightly changed since it's the aim to binomial. Uh, the applications have changed. It was just um, partial fractions in the previous pack, but this pack has got some extra nice little questions, actually. So let's have a look now. It's actually got the solution for this one. So we'll just follow it through and annotate it to make sure we're okay. So it says the first four terms of the expansion. So this is the first four terms of the expansion to there. Now they're the same as that. So if I put, if I sneak um, a 1 minus 6x plus 27x squared plus cx cubed, I hope you can see that the, that the anx put that there, is minus 6x. So if the x's cancel, I can get to an is minus 6. Then a similar vein, now there's a little bit of faffing around going on here. So that's, that's, the, that's the, the line where you say they're equal to each other. And if you look, I've rearranged, I've not rearranged it, A has rearranged it. You get A is minus 6 over M, which has gone there. And they've got some squaring, so minus 6 squared is 36. N squared on the bottom, the N has cancelled, and the 2 has cancelled down the 36 into an 18. It's a little bit of rearranging, we've moved the n up, and eventually I get to n is minus 2. Now I've got the n is minus 2, I can then work out what the a value is. And I've worked out what a and n are already, which is really, really nice. And then, for this example, I need to work out what c is. So I know that the cx cubed is equal to all that. So I know that C is that big equation. So now if I sub in my N is minus 2 and my A is 3 into the equation that I've got, I get C out as minus 1 or 8. So you might want to pause it just to get it all written down, but it's quite nice. I like that because you're just comparing coefficients. It's lovely. Oh, broke it. Keep going down. So let's have a look at exactly question 2. Question two, oh my word. Let's have a look at question two then. So the first thing is, it says it's small and it's in radians. So we're looking at small angle approximations. So we're looking at small angle approximations. In your formula booklet, it tells you that cos of x is 1 minus a half of x squared. That's what it tells you in the formula booklet. Now I'm doing cos of 3x, so you've got to remember you're switching the x out for 3x, you're squaring it, and then you divide by 2. So my cos of 3x is roughly 1 minus 9 2x squared. This 1 over cos 3x is the same as cos of 3x all to the power minus a half. And then if you can see, we've changed the cos 3x into the small angle approximation. And now what I've done is I'm doing a binomial expansion. So it just needs a little bit more explaining what's going on. So my 1 minus 9 over 2, x squared to the power of minus a half is there. Which is really the same as my 1 over the square root of cos 3x. And I've got the answer that I want. There's quite a lot to follow there, but it's nice. So I'm using small angle approximations, and then I change my cos into the small angle approximation and do binomial with it. Can't argue with that.
Right then, let's have a look at question three. So I'll probably stop I don't know. No, 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 no. Let's have a look at question three. Oh, question three has got answers as well, so that's quite nice. Question three is lovely as well. So it says the first three terms, oh, right. the first three terms, so let's have a look at the first three terms. Here we go. So there's my first three terms. So four plus x to the minus a half. Uh, so what does it say then? So that's the first three terms. Then it says, hence find the first three terms of four minus x cubed is that. So it's a like for like. I'll see if this next box does a like for like. Because I had a four plus x to the minus a half, and I'm changing it into a four minus x cubed to the minus a half, Hopefully you can see it's a straight replacement that the x gets replaced with a minus x cubed, which is what this says here. If you imagine brackets around these x values, you just need to replace them with the minus x cubed. But be really, really, really careful. So that leaves you with that binomial expansion for part B. So I'm hoping this next bit will be part two then. So then it says, so part B is done. So it's using your answer to part B, so that bit, find, oh, I'm going to integrate it now. So I'm going to integrate the expansion. So this is stuff that your calculator does for you when you're integrating stuff. So if you can see it, it's a straightforward integration with limits of 0 to 1, which gives us 0 0.517299.1, if you can read that on there. It might be that you need to um, open up the completed version to get the numbers off it, if that makes sense. So then it says, Edward goes on to use the expansion from B to find an approximation of that. So I'll explain why it's invalid. So if you look at the difference, you are kind of multiplying by minus a half, aren't you? You compare like for like. So we know, if you can see it, if you can see it, that because I was looking at the, the 1 plus x over 4 to the minus a half, that was valid for less than or equal to 4. But then this is now saying, what if I change it? If I change, change it into minus x cubed, then the maths goes a little bit astray. I don't know if you can read that. So I don't know if I can do it justice with the writing. So it'd be looking at like the minus the cube root of 4 less than x less than the cube root of 4. There. And that is, it's, it's minus 1.59 less than x is less than 1.59. So now we've got the minus 2. So the minus 2 takes it too far now, it's there. So the limit of minus 2 is outside the validity, so, it, so it's not valid. Uh, okay. And that comes from doing like for like with part B, where it changed the limit, hadn't it? Uh, so we could only use x values. Let's try to make this more obvious. So we can use, so we can use x values where it's like the cube root of 4, but the limit is saying, because you remember the limits are x values, aren't they? I'm using the limit from minus 2 to 0. So the limits are outside. Does that kind of make sense? Uh, so we use the x values for the modulus of x between there. Uh, anyway, got about 10 seconds left, so bye-bye.